questions answered. Episode one. So episode one is in the books. I hope you all really enjoyed it. Uh, many of our viewers had a number of questions about the episode, and I'm here to answer some of the most frequent ones. I absolutely had Matt in mind before I even went and looked at these barber chairs because, you know, the simple truth is that there isn't a huge market for these chairs. You know, they're practical. It's like, you're either going to sell them to someone who's going to use them in a barber shop in the use that they were intended for, or the only other sale is to, you know, sell them to someone who's going to use maybe one or two for a man cave or just sort of in a, you know, a funky location. And the chances of finding that buyer aren't nearly as good as one would expect. Uh, typically, if I didn't have a buyer lined up for these type of barber chairs, you know, I probably wouldn't pay more than, you know, a couple hundred dollars a piece, maybe even 50 or $100 a piece, just because they take up so much room. They're so amazingly heavy, especially if I had to bring these, you know, 1,600 miles back to my warehouse in Maine, <clears throat> I'd be completely insane. And, you know, it would be the type of thing where it would probably take me five to 10 years to sell one at maybe $1,000. So, it might sound silly that I'd want to pay fifty or a hundred dollars for something that I'd end up getting a thousand for, but that's the price you have to pay if you're going to have something for many, many years, transport it, have it take up floor space, and all of that. So with these particular barber chairs, I were willing to pay. I was willing to pay a bit more for you know two simple reasons. A, at least in the first case, there were three of them. And then with the fourth one, that made four. So power in numbers. If it was just an odd chair, I wouldn't be able to sell it to Matt because he's not going to want to ship, you know, a single chair to California. So the fact that I had four, very big deal. You know, I can pay, you know, a good bit more. And two, the fact that I actually had Matt lined up knowing that he was looking for these Koken president chairs. Um, you know, that was... That was the thing that absolutely made the deal. Because if he wasn't looking for these chairs, if he hadn't bought chairs from me in the past, um, you know, it would have been really tough. And, you know, the sellers who had these chairs, you know, they said they saw them online for 2000 apiece. That's a fully restored price, and that's someone who is also selling one every couple of years. You know, Matt, the buyer of these chairs, is probably going to pay more to have them restored then he actually paid for the chairs. I mean, it's not a simple process. It's not a cheap process. So, you know, in this, clay, <clears throat> in this case, I definitely you know, had a buyer lined up. I didn't pre-sell them, which, you know, I probably could have done. That's what many individuals in this business do is they'll go to a location, actually take pictures, and try to have something sold before they even buy it. And, you know, that happens all the time, and that's sort of an okay thing. Some people think of that, and they're like, oh, well, that's not legitimate. Yeah, that, that's sort of a, a fact of life in this business. You know, and most dealers don't mind you doing that, because as long as you're going to buy something from them, you know, they don't care if you're just going to flip it, you know, down the road to someone else. As long as everyone makes what they're happy with, you know, they're happy. Online at pasternakantiques.blogspot.com.